Over the last decade, Future Bass has grown into one of the most popular EDM genres with spearheading artists such as Bloom, San Holo, and Elenium. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make your own Future Bass drop in Soundation, the online music studio. You'll be able to open up the project that we make today for free by clicking the link in the description. No sign-in required. Now, let's get it. We'll kick things off by making the drums, but first we need a tempo. Future Bass is actually pretty flexible when it comes to tempo, and you can pretty much pick any tempo you'd like, but the most common tempo seems to be around 75 BPM, so we'll go with that. This will sound the same as going half tempo at 150 BPM, but going with 75 instead will make some stuff easier later on. There are multiple ways of creating drums and Soundation, and in this tutorial, we'll be using the Beat Maker. Go to the sound library and choose Beats. You can then search for Future Bass. As of now, there's only one Future Bass kit called Crystalline. I'm sure there will be more added in the future. Let's drag it in. Every beat has a suggested tempo, and this one is 70 BPM, but I'll stick to 75. Double click the clip to open the beat maker. As you can see, it comes loaded with a pre-made beat, so let's listen. You could clear the whole pattern and start from scratch, but I like this beat and I want to use it as a starting point. You could make a whole track with just the beat maker, but I will only use it for the drums, so let's remove the chords by clicking and dragging. Let's break down what's going on with these drums and maybe change it a little along the way. There's a fat kick playing this pattern. Then there's this dark acoustic sounding snare playing on all the seconds and fourths. It's also layered together with this higher pitched snare. This other snappy snare plays a more syncopated rhythm, accenting the offbeats. The hi-hat is playing every 16th note, except for the end of every bar. Leaving space like this is a common future bass technique to make it more dynamic and really emphasize the snare hit by creating silence after it. There are also some gaps where this stick sound is playing. These two sounds form a unit. I want to slightly modify this beat. Maybe add a kick right before the snare on the twos. And change up this hi-hat and stick pattern. Other than that, there are some cymbal hits to mark the start of this two-bar loop and a simple tom fill at the end. It's very common in Future Bass to have simple, fat, acoustic-sounding tom fills like these. You'll typically hear them right before the drop, but also at the end of the loop, like this. Let's also drag the upper corner to loop this clip so we have a bit more to work with and also extend the loop region. To add some more energy and texture, I'll add some percussion loops. So I'll go to the sound library and click loops and samples. I'll open the filter options and choose percussion. I'll browse until I find something cool. Okay, I found two loops that I like. This shaker, and this hi-hat and clap loop. Let's drag them in. These loops are in a faster tempo right now, so I'll select the Pitch Stretch tool and drag the sides of them to match the tempo of this project. And then loop these clips as well, so it's all the same length. Double click on the channel to open the bottom panel. Here you can add some effects. I will add an effect called Fakey to both of these tracks. 
This creates a pumping effect that's used quite a lot in future bass and other EDM genres. I'll let this play while I adjust the depth to increase or decrease the effect. And this effect is the reason I went with 75 for the tempo instead of the 150 BPM. If it was 150, it would pump twice as fast, but we want this slower pumping. An integral part of what makes future bass sound like future bass is the chords. Regular major and minor chords won't cut it. You wanna go for more colorful chords like seventh and ninth chords. This will make it sound much more complex and rich. We've already made a series of videos on how to build chords and progressions. So if you wanna make your own chords from scratch, make sure you watch those, especially the one on colorful chords. You can also take a little shortcut like I'll be doing today. Go to the library and click on MIDI melodies and chords. If you search color, you'll get a bunch of progressions that will work great in future bass. They're all in the keys C major and A minor, by the way. So I'll pick one and drag it into the project. Since this is MIDI, you can double click on the clip to open up the note editor and customize the chords however you want. I wanna create more of an open voicing, so I'll select some of these notes and hold shift and press the down arrow key to drop them down one octave. I also want the chords to stop playing when the snare hits to make it more dynamic and really emphasize the snare. So let's select all the notes by hitting command or control A and drag the end of the note so they stop when the snare starts. Then hold option or alt while dragging the notes to copy them over. And I think I'm gonna drag some of these out to create some variation. I'm happy with this, so let's change the sound now. Future bass chords will usually be played on a super saw. Super saw is a bright and buzzy synth sound with multiple saw waves that are detuned from each other, making them sound huge and wide. So I'll go back to the library, click instrument presets and search super saw. I will go to the future pad preset. So let's drag it onto the channel with the chords. I'll add a parametric EQ to make it fit better in the mix. Let's remove the bass since we're gonna add a bass later. Scoop some low mids out and increase the treble a little bit. Now it sounds a bit cleaner and brighter. And just like the percussion loops, I want to add a fakey to get that pumping effect. Let's bump the depth up to 100%. I also increased the release because I thought it sounded like it opened too quickly and now it's more drawn out and I think it fits the groove better. Another common thing to do with the chords in Future Bass is making arpeggios. Arpeggios is when you break up the chords into their individual notes and play them sequentially. Since we already have the chords on this channel, I can simply right click on it and choose clone channel and content. For arpeggios, you want a simple lead sound. So I'll search for lead. I know the Squarp lead preset is great for this, so I'll drag it onto the channel to switch out the sound. Now I will open the note editor and turn these chords into arpeggios. Let's start with the first chord. I'll select and delete these notes and move these here because I want the arpeggio to play when the super saw is silent. I also want this arpeggio to be really fast, so I'll zoom in to get a finer grid. Now I'll make the chord smaller so I have more space. This will be my guide, so I'll move it out of the way. Then you can remove duplicate notes. These two are both A's, so I'll delete this one. Then I'll make these notes more compact by moving this note one octave down. I want this to be a two octave arpeggio, 
So I want to extend this chord. To do that, select the chord, press Option or Alt, and drag the notes up so they fall on the same notes, but one octave higher. Now that we have a two octave chord, you can simply draw in an arpeggio pattern. I'll go with a pattern that goes up and then down. Just double click to add the notes one after another. Make sure to follow the guide on the left and it'll sound great. When you're done, you can delete the guide notes. It's the same workflow for the other chords, so I'll do them off camera real quick. Now I've made all the arpeggios and also added a fakey to make it pump like the other channels. Let's make the incredible bass now. I'll start by cloning this channel again since we can use the chords for the bass notes. There are two prevalent types of bass sounds in future bass, and those are 808s and Reese basses. So you can try either, but I think a Reese bass will work better here, so I'll search Reese here under Instrument Presets. I'll try the Reese Roar preset, drag it onto the channel to switch out the sound. Let's open the note editor and remove all notes except the bottom ones. These notes are too low, so I'll select them, hold down shift and press the up arrow key to bring it up one octave. There we go. And again, add a fakie to make it pump. All that's needed now is a lead melody. You can do this with a synth or really anything you want, but a staple in future bass is to use vocal chops. This is when you take a vocal, cut it up into pieces, rearrange them and create something new. So to do this, you will need a vocal recording. You could record yourself or your friend singing. You could also use a loop from our sample library or from somewhere else. I'll drag this audio file from my file manager to the drop area. This was originally used for another song, but it doesn't matter since we're gonna chop it up. This is what it sounds like before doing anything to it. This vocal happens to be in the same key as what we've already made, which is A minor, and this makes it a lot easier for us but if it wasn't made in the same key, you can simply transpose all the MIDI to fit the key of the sample or vice versa. But we're good to go, so I will activate the scissor tool and cut out pieces that I like. Then switch back to the pointer tool and delete the scraps. One cool thing you can do is pitch the vocals up one octave. Do this by activating the pitch stretch tool. Then select the clips and drag the side to half the length. Then you can switch back to the pointer tool and move the clips around until you come up with something you like. You can drag the sides out to bring back more of the vocal. And you can also make the vocal play backward by right clicking and choosing reverse clip. All of this is trial and error, so I'll play around with it until I got something I like. After some experimenting, this is what I came up with. In addition to the vocal chopping, I added some effects, including distortion to make it really pop, and reverb and delay for a sense of space and atmosphere. Let's listen to the full drop.
And there you have it. That's how you can make your very own Future Base drop. There are a lot of different flavors to Future Base, so I recommend that you find your own style, experiment, and try to come up with something unique. Click the link in the description to get this project for free. Play around with it. Maybe turn this drop into a whole song. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. See you in the next video.